M1 Evo. It's a nifty case. There's lots to like about it. We did a review of this one recently. Today, let's take a deeper dive. Welcome to Machines More. So we took a look at the V2 prototype recently. There's a lot of potentially impressive positive changes up on the horizon. A lot of those still a TBD, uh, what the final spec is gonna be like, but lots to look forward to. Availability of that case, still a bit unknown. Uh, many of you have the 1.1 on route or already have that or the V1. So today let's focus on what we have now and take a deeper dive into the build process and some configurations you can set up within EAO. And hopefully this will give you some ideas as to how the components can be fit and laid out. And then we'll just do a quick thermal comparison of those three different setups. Let's get started. All right, so here we go. This case, when you take it out of the box, it's not gonna look like this. I've already done uh, some of the pre-assembly. We won't do a full uh, detailed build guide just yet. I plan to do one uh, from scratch at the beginning, but uh, you will mount this up. It'll look something like this. You kind of have a little bit of freedom with this version. With the new one, this bottom panel is actually going to have the side panel uh, where your motherboard attaches. It's actually going to be unibody, so you won't be able to move these bars around. Uh, there shouldn't be a real need to play around with it anyway, though. Like, uh, if you set it out this way, you can do either MATX board or Mini ITX board. So let's talk through that decision process real quick. I removed these standoffs from the MATX position, but I can still show you here. Okay, so indeed, the MATX board here works absolutely fine. It takes up the entire height of the case. There's some pluses, minuses, uh, pros and cons for this kind of setup, right? For one, there's a lot more boards you can choose from. And especially for AM5, that's pretty huge because the board selection is pretty dismal uh, in the mini on the mini ITX side. But you do introduce some things you may have to work around. Uh, number one, if you wanted to run case fans or radiator here at the top, that may not happen uh, because this depending on your board's uh, heat sink here. Now, yeah, it might be too tall. In fact, if I put this here, right, this is gonna stick out of the case. So fans, at least one fan here may not happen. Radiator, definitely uh, gonna be difficult. On this side, you, sh uh, you, you, you should be able to position the power supply here so that you can still have that top fan there, no problem. If you wanted to run case fans on the side, you can do a 92 millimeter fan. Okay, just... Uh, Give you an idea here okay so that can work there bottom fans aren't a problem with the with the matx board with uh, depending on if you do have anything in the bottom expansion slot which most of you uh, many of you won't be using because you'll just be using your card in the main slot and which is here you know that that's not going to affect anything if you do have something here the fans uh, may be obstructed if you look at the case it does have standoff so there's rails with holes here. So this has uh, infinite positioning here, infinite positioning here. These are pre-drilled holes. That allows you to place the standoffs pretty much exactly where you want it. So if you're using a mini ITX board like this, you have the freedom to run it, you know, here, here, wherever you want. Uh, the GPU cooler, you know, if you just give that enough thickness here, then you have a lot of room at the top. If you uh, really have a small GPU, you could you know, shift that lower and you can even top mount a radiator instead of having to side mount it. That's one option. I'm going to be top mounting the radi radiator, but I'm going to be doing a uh, vertical GPU because our GPU is going to be too thick to do uh, that at the bottom. I think with the mini ITX board, what you do open up is the possibility to do case fans at the side here and this is one of the biggest changes here i think with the uh, m1 evo because the m1 classic did not have this configuration in fact not many cases can fit two uh, 120 millimeter fans at the side if you have a side mounted radiator intaking this will exhaust uh, that'll exhaust the gpus waste heat and also the radiator a 92 millimeter fan at the rear here is still 
uh, just a, a standard thing you can do if you feel like you want it. So once you decide on the board, you know, that may impact where you position the power plug. And I'll show you the power plug. Okay, so similar to the M1 Classic, you, this plate will cover the unused uh, power port hole. You can choose this or here. If you have a thicker board, this may not work, just depending on how the uh, cable is oriented. Then you might have to go to this one. You can hang a vertical GPU right here. Yeah, these are pass-throughs uh, for liquid cooling. We're gonna be using the vertical GPU. I'll show you that. Uh, another thing is you do have a Kensington lock slot here. So power supply, I would go SFX if you can, if you can find a good one, but should, there are plenty of them right now. So in, in various uh, power levels, so you should have uh, no problem with that. You can get a mount for an ATX power supply. That is also possible. It is an option though. Uh, but the SFX will give you a lot more freedom in terms of the placement. You can mount it here at the side. That's one possibility. I don't like this as much because you lose uh, the special, you know, the super special fan position here. Um, so one thing we can do is mount it here. And this is what I would recommend. So this is the power supply cage. It is drilled. Uh, there's some threads here. And that lines up with this plate uh, that that will position your power supply as well because this will kind of inset mount it a little bit and with the holes being drilled vertically you can adjust the height of the power supply which is very useful depending on if you want to place a radiator at the top or bottom and you want to get that perfect position for this uh, very very useful or so do you have some freedom for positioning the power supply bracket when it's in the forward position, but in order to prevent it from being able to pivot um, in this position, you do want to attach it to the main board panel along with the front panel. So you'll put the uh, power supply bracket in this position. Okay. And what we'll do is, if you see if I slide it up here, and tightening it down here. And so that will line it up with one of the holes, uh, depending on which height position you place the bracket in, it should line up with one of these main board hole panels. And you can just take one of the countersunk M3 screws and just attach it in that way, okay? And that will prevent it from being able to pivot too much. Okay, and just tighten it down right there. You can see that is solid. And it won't, uh, the only potential part that can pivot is this right here. Okay, but this is uh, it's locked down. And when you have the power supply here, this is not gonna, it's not gonna move independently. One consideration, if you have a mini ITX board, you're fine with side panel fans here still, but if you have an MATX port and you wanted the 92 millimeter fan in this position, your power supply is gonna occupy that space. So you do lose that spot underneath it. If your cable management is good, you sh should be able to fit something here still. But uh, that I think uh, some of you may prefer having this connection here for you could still move it outwards and that's uh, definitely fine. Just be aware that there is the possibility for this to move slightly. It'll still move a little bit like back and forth, but it's uh, it's not gonna go anywhere. If you're traveling, I would be a little bit concerned. I think that is a point of improvement, a uh, potential uh, point of improvement there. You will have to install that front IO plate. I'll talk about it real quick. Power LED, power switch, that's all you get. Uh, two USB A's, this will split off to two headers and a USB C. And you'll see there's actually a another uh, USB C item. This, uh, it's not a mistake, it's a pass through for a USB 4. So if your motherboard has that capability, you can leverage that. Let's talk about this side case fan here. With the mini ITX configuration, you do have the ability to do a full 120 millimeter fan over here. Uh, you're just going to use these one, two holes on the side and one, two holes at the bottom if you're doing two. You know, that's only going to give you two points of contact. And if you only got it here, that's going to be, you know, the fan's going to be able to, to, to rock like that. So if you want, you can use something like these uh, P28s from Lee & Lee, which are interconnected and you don't need a bracket. The other thing 
that uh, they include with the case is this type of thing. This little doohickey actually will hook your fans up and you just, you know, pop a, a fan screw in each socket. I did a 3D printed fan bracket just to connect these two fans side by side. Uh, you can grab the file down below. Uh, this will, you know, allow you to hook those up together and then just screw it down. If you don't want to do this, you can just zip tie the fans together. That's probably the simplest way to do it. And you won't even see it because this will be on the blind side of the fan. I think this is one of the key features for this case here. Just the ability to run the fans on this side. There's really not, uh, for the traditional layout cases, this is not a common position. They've got the Slager S620, which gives you the, the one fan on the side, but definitely not two. So the rad plate, this will mount on the side if you want to hold your radiator in this position on the side. And if you have the uh, power supply right here, you can do just a 240, okay? Because you get 280 millimeters like this. That's not long enough for a 280. Got one right here. So you're gonna need the entire length of the case for that. So for that, most likely you will have to sacrifice this and then mount the power supply uh, flat on the side, okay? But I think a 240 here is, uh, and having the fans here, that would be uh, my preference here. And so if you're using the side rad panel, just uh, screw that down here. So the other thing that this is good for, it's a fan bracket here at the top. And then this will allow you to hang your fans. Now, if you're not comfortable with just having, uh, you know, just that right there, then you can use the entire uh, real estate here with uh, both of these brackets. So that's what uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use both of these here at the top. So with that installing, you notice that I've kind of laid this out first before we place the motherboard, because actually, the position of the motherboard, you should play around with that first. If you're doing the mini ITX uh, motherboard, you can position it where you like. So I think uh, once you have the rad plate here, then you mount the radiator just to get an idea of how much clearance you have. Now you can always take that off really quickly too, if, the, uh, if you need the uh, extra space to place your motherboard, but having that decision making process up front will save you a lot of agony it's just gauge uh, how much room that you, you'll have for your uh, motherboard and where to position that properly so we'll just put the uh, radiator in and then we can uh, just see where we need to position the, the motherboard okay and what you're looking for is where the holes on the motherboard line up to the pre-drilled holes on those rails and uh, this way you know, you'll give yourself as much just enough room see the ram sticks here they will butt up against the uh, the fans here these are thicker fans but um just kind of eyeball that and we'll place our standoffs accordingly so i've got the standoffs positioned so i'm just um the ones with the drilled out holes positioned floating standoffs still need to be positioned here right so We'll line that up perfectly, and then we'll screw those down. The extra length here uh, enables you to put power supply here and also those fans. You know, just the classic here. You know, there's a lot less space here for the radiator also. So that is what enables that. The extra height is what gives you the capability to place the MATX board. Okay. The width is uh, pretty much unchanged, but way more flexibility in the new one. And that does bring it out to be about 15 liters versus the 12.7 or so on the classic, but I think it's volume well spent. Quick about the build, this is a 7900X and uh, Kingston's DDR5. We're gonna go with the 6800 XT. You can see there's nearly not much room in this build uh, to, to fit that now. We're gonna be using the vertical GPU to get this uh, top mounted radiator. Why not a bottom mounted rad? Um, generally speaking, with most AIOs where the 
uh, pump is in the CPU block. You don't want to do that uh, bottom mount because then this becomes the highest point of your uh, setup, uh, the, the liquid cooler, and then the bubbles will gather in here. You'll get noise, uh, reduce longevity for your unit. So putting it at the top actually is the best position that you could do that. And si side mounting is okay as well. Uh, if you do have the right unit, you can also you can in fact put that at the bottom. There is are a few uh, units like that. The Pure Loop from Be Quiet, the Pure Loop Two FX, which I've uh, reviewed on the channel. Um, we'll do a, a build with that at some point. But that can go on the bottom. Okay, one thing the fan is obstructed by the uh, radiator partially, so. Uh, it's not optimal, but I'd still rather have this than not have it. Um, both fans running as an exhaust will bring in air to, uh, through the side panel to the GPU here. I've also put the power cable in. With the setup I'm going with here, this is going to keep it the most concealed. Just ran a zip tie through the fan hole. Just so we can kind of cinch these up along the center channel. We'll just try to make this as straight as possible. And uh, you can also add another fan here at the bottom. For one of the configurations I'm testing, we'll be using the riser cable. So putting a fan here really wouldn't do too much. It would be blocked directly. Uh, but for the side panel uh, rad mount, I will also I have another fan here as well. So this is the unit we'll be using for this build. I did switch up the AIO part uh, compared to what I had as a placeholder earlier. This is the ML240 Atmos that we reviewed recently. Um, the tubing's a little bit more flexible with this one than the PL240 Flux. So it'd be a little bit more suitable because we're going to be doing a little bit more of uh, tubing bending in this build. Uh, still got the Fantex T30s. This is a 27 millimeter radiator, so it altogether adds up to be about 57 uh, of, of uh, total thickness here. There's just enough margin here. It could have also brought it down lower another notch. So I haven't attached this end yet of the radiator. So if you just have, for example, this bracket here, you know, this is more or less supported and um, by the power supply directly under it, but still, you know, it's, it, it could, could move. That is attached and we'll just kind of manage the tubing a little bit. But the thing to do now is the a vertical GPU. So two things you need, a riser cable kit. This is uh, something you can option on when you buy the case and it comes with a bracket here. This is L-shaped metal bracket. You'll attach the riser cable to that bracket and then you will mount it to the bottom of the case. You'll see a series of holes here. That's what that's for. If you're not doing the vertical GPU bracket, the bottom of the case, you can, you know, it doesn't really matter which side the holes are on. Two ways to do it. You can attach the uh, graphics card to the riser cable. Okay, and then secure it to the bottom of the case. Uh, the case panel should be off. And then you'll kind of place the bottom panel together back um, as this attaches to the motherboard. So that's one way to do it. That's the way the manual says. I'm not a big fan of that. I think there's a lot of cable management that you want to do beforehand. For example, just how you arrange the IO cables and everything. And if you remove the, or play with the bottom panel too much, a lot of that organization can, uh, can potentially uh, go away. So what I would recommend doing, go ahead and you can attach the cable uh, to, the, uh, to the bottom of the case with the bottom in place, okay? Now this is gonna be a little bit more limiting for how much room you have to work in underneath. I've taken out this plate here what I did was just loosen this up and then taking out the screws and this comes out. You'll see why. And then this is the vertical GPU bracket. You just uh, remove the piece that was here before, which is this guy with the pass throughs. Now do take note, you don't strictly need to uh, remove this guy 
uh, in order to fit this. You could fit this over the original bracket here, but the manual does say to remove this. And I already know where, where the uh, uh, riser cable foot needs to be attached to, but if not, you're gonna want to experiment with it a little bit. Don't screw it in place yet. I've already put, placed the rubber feet at the bottom of the case. And you can do that too. Okay. Okay. So that's the reason I took out that back panel is that now we can kind of have a lot more leeway to, to position this card. Now we could just pop this into the riser cable. Okay. So once you've got the card in, then you turn your attention to the hanger here at the back. All right. And then you can just go ahead and secure the card make sure the hanger is plumb which if you've uh, adjusted the riser cable to the correct position uh, it should look like this if if not you can still adjust it that's no problem okay so once that is screwed down and secure you can put this panel back if you want. Just uh, slot this right back in. Okay, uh, with that uh, rubber feet, this is one option. These are an add-on, uh, but you can get just the uh, regular little rubber pads. These don't elevate the case off the surface much. You may prefer that. This is more like the classic M1 feet, which I like. We can put the side panels in. They'll just slot into the grooves at the side. It's the same way the T1 works. So we'll just slot in the side panel. Okay. This cable can just tuck here. It'll it'll work with the top cover. Don't worry. It seems like it might uh, be too tall, thick, but it, it's fine. The one thing I'll add is just make sure that it's actually securely flush. Uh, otherwise, if there's a little bit of this panel sticking out and you force it and bend it in place, that could kind of pry it up and then you'll bend the panel. And uh, that's no good. But tricky when you have to hold it down. So if you have a helper handy, it's good. But yeah, you shouldn't have any problem managing this on your own. One thing to note is uh, taking off the side panel, especially under the motherboard, it's a little bit tricky. You wanna pull up to kind of get it out of the slot. Okay, and once you feel that disengage, then you can lift it at an angle and then that'll come out. Right. It's not immediately straightforward. It's a little bit clunky, but uh, you'll get used to it. Certainly not as easy as just, um, you know, popping it out. So again, just, you know, you feel that disengage and then sometimes it doesn't easy to do that. And then you can just pull it out. This is the vertical GPU with the top mounted radiator build. And then I'll show you how to do the traditional layout. This is the traditional layout, but you can see it's traditional layout on steroids. Uh, I've put in two NFA 12 by 15 slim fans at the top. We still have our two from the vertical GPU build. And then I stuck another two Chromax NFA 12 by 25s at the bottom. Crazy, right? Because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially more fans than you could have gotten uh, with the uh, classic build. Okay, the radiator is on the half bracket, ready to go. We're gonna attach that here, but before we do that, I'll put the GPU in, because it's gonna be a little easier to wrangle that first. Okay, so we'll leave this off to the side. Little bit tricky at this point, okay, because it's pretty tight here. We're gonna make sure all our cables, they still stay in place. So that is in, uh, once that's in place, we can then put this. What you do is you slot this bracket over the uh, rear IO hanger, 
screw that in uh, and then screw this down to the case. Make sure the plate is uh, screwed down. A little bit clunky. It's uh, There's no built-in hanger directly. And you see the cart is pushing up against the bottom fans a little bit. It's okay, we'll try it out like this. Um, you can always put slim fans at the bottom as well, but I really wanted to max this thing out and see what happens. Just to keep things a little bit more simple, you know, for a less is more approach, we can also just set it up with top exhaust. Um, bottom fans with a big GPU like that, when they're touching, it's not always great. And we'll see in the results shortly how that works out. One word of caution is that if you're doing the traditional layout and you want to have this 25 millimeter fan, you need to absolutely make sure that the GPU will latch into your expansion slot properly. Real quick on drive compatibility, there's not the simple way to just pop the front panel off and install the two and a half inch SSDs underneath that front panel that's gone. Uh, you can stick them on the bottom panel of the case if you're if you're using two and a half inch SSDs uh, for three and a half HDDs or a whole stack of two and a half inch SSDs. This will be your drive bracket, and that'll mount vertically here. Obviously, you know if you have a GP long GP like this, that may not happen, but this in theory would would slot in right here into the case. So, okay, so it's closed up and all fits. It's really tight though is the one that can that cable power cable at the side of the gpu this is slightly on the wider side it does bulge a little bit i think with a little bit better management there or a 90 degree adapter i think it'd be okay but um you know, it's not too bad okay so those configurations that's just a tip of the iceberg so one configuration i haven't covered that you may be curious about is inversion and that tends to be a benefit to gpu thermals when the bottom clearance is very tight or you can't elevate the case off the work surface enough, such as with the FormD T1 reference edition. Now with the Evo, I would just get the classic style feet and raise the case up off the work surface enough. If you have the smaller pads and your GPU is really, really thick and close to the bottom, then yeah, I think your GPU thermals will benefit from that. But of course, the flip side is if you wanted to run fans on the now bottom side after you're flipping it, the airflow is just going to be as choked off there now. So after playing around with this case quite a bit, my advice is this. If you're having issues with GPU thermals or airflow at the bottom and you're using a mini ITX board, just raise up that motherboard higher, you know, play with the standoff position and that way your GPU can have breathing room and try that out before going, you know, and flipping the case around. So quick thermal comparison for our three configurations, just a refresher here. All of these are utilizing the 220 millimeter case fans on the side of the motherboard on that motherboard panel. First up is our vertical GPU build. Second is our traditional layout while going ham with a bunch of case fans. And third is our more sensible layout uh, with those two top fans. For a heavy CPU only render scenario, a 240 with sensible fan speeds on the Fantex T30s, you know, kind of a uh, enhanced 240, is just about the minimum you can get away with with the 7900X, since all of these are essentially at the thermal throttle temperature. But uh, we can still look at the frequencies and see what we get here. Surprisingly, the side rad with top and side panel fans appears to be the less is more champion here. And the top mounted exhaust rad, even though the GPU is idle, it's still going to fall behind slightly. It's not a huge difference by any means, but that config has a less direct path for the radiator's air intake, right? So in a combined use scenario, that's uh, 1440p gaming here. All these configurations are pretty good for the GPU. For the traditional layouts, we've given it a good amount of breathing room, uh, given the GPU a good amount of breathing room above the bottom panel or assisted it with case fans. And with the vertical GPU, it can intake directly from the mesh side panel unimpeded. In this scenario, the maxed out traditional build has the best thermals, followed by the one with two fewer fans. And the vertical GPU is not bad, but it's, uh, it's gonna be the worst one out of all these. So I'd say from what I've seen, if you're doing a traditional layout, the top fans, they're pretty key. Uh, the bottom fans under the GPU can help GPU thermals slightly, but it's not imperative here. As it turns out, these side panel fans do benefit the GPU quite a bit. Testing without them, the GPU thermals do fall behind a lot more than when you don't have uh, bottom fans. So if you do have a limited number of case fans, I would be more inclined to make room for them at the top and also next to the motherboard if possible. 
Anyhow, lots of things you can do with this case. It's a lot of fun. Hope you found that helpful. Please remember to give a like if so. More content to come soon on this case, so please make sure you're subscribed. I'll leave links down below for the components. And uh, thanks for watching today.